We are here with Dave Roman, the creator of Astronaut Academy and Astronaut Academy, Teen Boat, and uh, also a contributor to Nursery Rhyme, the Eisner-nominated Nursery Rhyme Comics. Thanks a lot for meeting with us. Thank you. So let's talk Astronaut Academy for a little bit here. Um, this was something that you started as a web comic, and it was it was actually called something else. It was a, it was is Astronaut Elementary. Astronaut Elementary, and so it, it is that it is a school in space. But the main character there, there's something a little bit different about him. What's the what's different about the main character? Um, well, the main character is Hakata Soy, and he was a space hero who was actually homeschooled. Um, he grew up on a giant robot uh, with his friends that sort of controlled the giant robot and they would save planets from destruction and things like that. Um, but his parents decide that he should go and get formal education, so he goes to school at a space station that is Astronaut Academy, which is basically like a private school in outer space with a very strange group of kids that he becomes friends with. So where did this one come from where, where was your idea for this or was it lots of voltron as a kid a little bit of voltron a lot of uh uh just anime and sort of mecha stuff like that like voltron um and just wanting to do something that sort of channeled my love of the world's fair and tomorrowland at disneyland mm -hmm. and science you know i just grew up loving science fiction um, and wanting just to combine that with my love of comic strips, mm -hmm. um, like Calvin and Hobbes and Garfield and Peanuts, and do something that felt a little bit like a comic strip, but also had a lot of sort of heavy science fiction and sort of sort of the crazy whimsy that I like uh, from like things like Monty Python's Flying Circus, and I loved all like the Mel Brooks movies growing up as a kid and things like that. Now, is this? Is this it for Astronaut Academy? Is this it? You're done telling the stories, or are you still have more that you want to come out and tell? Um, well, I've got the second volume that is coming out in spring of next year, mm -hmm. and I definitely thought that I was writing a two-book series when I started, but along the way, it kind of keeps expanding and growing, and I've had lots of funny ideas, and I have a notebook with just tons of little things that are like, add to that list, add to that list. So at this point, I could probably do at least two more books easy mm -hmm. and maybe by the time I would do those two books I have another two books now another one that also started out as a web comic is teen boat all the angst of a teenager with the added excitement of a boat yes it is about a, a young man who can transform into a yacht all right walk me through how this one came to be because I, I I can't wrap my head around how this story got it start um, well it was co-created with my friend John Green who I've been uh, collaborating with for years we met while I was still in high school so we were doing comics together all the time and traveling to all these shows um, and when cartoonists hang out you tend to talk crazy ideas and sometimes you sketch out silly things um, and I think we were talking about sort of the crazy cartoons of the 80s lots of transformers and GoBots and things like that transformation was a big of those right. uh, of, of that time um, and I think we just started thinking of also like the dorkier cartoons like the Rubik's Cube cartoon yeah. um, and stuff like that so we were just kind of in that mindset and we started thinking about like the pitch meetings for these things and how sometimes when you're in a pitch meeting I worked at Nickelodeon at the time and and, and you sort of see how when something comes in one way and it sort of ends up something totally different and we we're imagining like what if instead of robots or cars or jets you know, the f like boats were the big thing. Um, and John actually came up with the tagline, the angst of being a teen, the thrill of being a boat. And then we just cracked up and we just kept laughing about it. And we would tell our friends a sort of joke around like, oh, what if there was this thing, teen boat? And a year later we were like, we should actually just do it and just make it as a comic. And so it started as a mini comic that we did for the Small Press Expo. Um, and the reception was just so positive that we just kept making more and then, you know, after a while, and actually, editors started approaching us about doing it as a book. Now, the the web comic is actually significantly shorter, I believe, than the published book. Correct? Yeah. Well, we only put a couple of like so we wrote them as short chapters, and and the final book is actually made up of chapters. Mm -hmm. um, I think we only put like the first three chapters or something like that online, mm -hmm. um, and that was mainly just because we uh, have no web skills whatsoever. Um, and so we were just using like a free website, Web Comics Nation, to update our stuff and didn't really know how to make a website. Um, 
So eventually we just stopped doing it <laughs> and started focusing on books because that's just sort of what our, our natural skills were. Now, another one that you are a part of is Nursery Rhyme Comics, yeah. which you and your wife um, both contributed pieces to it. How did you get involved with it? And then how did you select which nursery rhyme you were going to do, or was it given to you? Um, well, Chris Duffy uh, was the editor of the book, and he, uh, Chris and I actually worked together at Nickelodeon for 11 years. Um, so we have a great relationship, um, and I think Chris just choosing artists, wanted to work with people whose stuff that he liked. And, you know, I was just honored to be to be included because there's so many great artists in there, including my wife, Raina, um, and a lot of people who I'm just a big fan of, um, like Richard Thompson, who does Cul-de-Sac, and Mike Mignola, who does Hellboy, and, you know, endless people. Yeah, it is an all-star cast. Yeah, it's an all-star uh, cast from, like, indie people to mainstream people to just, you know, it's just fantastic. Um, and... Chris actually matched the story to the artist. Okay. So he just threw it at me, one, two, buckle your shoe, <laughs> go. Um, and you know, it's funny, like, even though we grew up with these nursery rhymes, we don't really spend a lot of time thinking about them or, ha or, or realizing what little sense that they actually make until you actually have to draw and interpret the words to these stories. Um, and so thinking about it, trying to construct it into a story, I actually, I couldn't really make sense of it in a logical way, so I actually started making it more silly mm -hmm. and actually made it into a science fiction story, possibly because I was working on Astronaut Academy at the time, but um, I decided to make the one, the two, the three, the four actually be clones mm -hmm. rather than just the numerals. So they're, they're little kid clones that each have the number on them, um, which is also a little bit of a nod to uh, Dr. Seuss's Thing uh, One and Thing Two. Thing, two, mm -hmm. thing One and Thing Two. So, you know... Your career seems to be more or less based on getting books into the hands of kids. You have worked, um, you know, done work with the Ronald McDonald House and cartooning. You, uh, you go to the uh, ALA conference. Why is it? What is it that you? Why is it you feel so strongly about getting comics into to the hands of younger readers? Because that's. That's how I got into it. I mean, I was a kid who started reading from comics. And I remember spending time drawing comics as a kid with my sister and my cousins, and we all loved comics. Um, but as I got older, I started hearing more and more about how comics had sort of alienated kids to a certain degree. And, um, and kids' comics wasn't as uh, robust, uh, or at least not as creative. It seemed like even though I worked at Nickelodeon and I was working on comics based on TV shows, I wanted to see more comics that weren't necessarily Spongebob or Scooby-Doo, um, all of which have great comics, and all the Disney comics are great, um, but I wanted to see more original stuff, uh, so I started, that sort of became my focus, was just trying to create stuff. Um, also just channeling into the energy of what I like to do when I was a kid, which is doodle, mm -hmm. and just come up with, when any crazy idea you come up with is sort of good to go. Um, and I think that's what, when kids are making comics, that's sort of the attitude. They're not worried about drawing really well. They're just uh, having a good time. And I think with my comics, especially Astronaut Academy and Team Boat to a certain extent too, even though I didn't draw it, is still us just having a really good time and hoping that that, uh, you know, is infectious and that other people will get in on the joke and enjoy, you know, the humor of it. Are, it's going to sound strange, but do you have ambitions to do a more grown up or adult type book or are you happy working with just the the younger levels i think i'm pretty happy with it um, i certainly have ideas that maybe would be more appropriate for teens or adults um, I, in fact i did do a series called agnes quill right. for slave labor graphics mm -hmm. and that's definitely you know teen i wouldn't say you know there's it's it's mainly just because it's got a little bit of gore and a little bit of violence and stuff um so every now and then I think I do push in that direction. I certainly am a fan of all that stuff, but I think that there's enough room uh, for kids' comics, and there's a lot of, I think there's a big demand for it nowadays. I think now more and more kids are getting back into comics, and, and more parents are seeing or trying to get their kids to read through comics, and teachers and schools are really excited about it. So I think the opportunity is there for people who do do kids' comics to sort of get their stuff out there. And um, so for now... It's a, it's a good, pretty good place to be. I enjoy it. 
So you've got the second volume of Astronaut Academy coming out in the spring, you said? Spring of 2013. Any other projects in the pipeline you can talk about? Um, I'm actually already got the contract to write Team Boat 2. So um, now that I finished Astronaut Academy, I'm going to go right back into Team Boat. Um, and then we'll probably maybe do another uh, story for the Explorer anthology, mm -hmm. which is uh, Kazoo Kibuishi's uh, short story collection through Abrams. All right. Well, let's wrap this up the way we always do, by asking you, what's your issue? What is that comic you read that's so crazy and wild and out there that when you're talking with your friends, you're like, hey, have you read this? Well, the one that a lot of people seem to not to have not read and don't believe me when I tell them about it is a book called Garfield's Nine Lives, which is a collection of Garfield short stories, nine short stories, that range from horrific to disturbing to... Um, noir to slapstick comedy. It's a very, very strange book. I would say that it's sort of like Garfield meets Heavy Metal Magazine meets sort of the flight anthology. Mm -hmm. there, there's painted stories. There's like ink scratch stories. There's stories where Garfield is a real cat who's been like experimented on by in a laboratory and then like escapes and then like attacks and kills people and it's just really, really disturbing. And it's, it's really a Garfield book for adults um, that was drawn by studio artists that Jim Davis basically said, just go crazy and just have fun and just do something really, you know, using your talents. Um, and somehow I got my hands on this when I was a kid and it really made an impression on me because I'd never seen a character like Garfield, which is sort of like a kid's character, right. sort of interpreted in all these different ways by all these different artists. Um, and I think that kind of stuck with me for years to come. <laughs> I'm going to have to check that out because that's definitely not how I think of Garfield. Yeah, I got it on. I actually tracked it down on Amazon Marketplace. It's like a used copy, really okay. cheap. But it'll, it, it, it is not for kids. It's very disturbing. <laughs> well, thank you very much for meeting with us. And all the best and continued success to you. Thank you so much.